Lord Jesus, we thank you for this evening. We thank you um, just for what Christmas means to us as your people. God, I lift up this message and I pray that you guide my words and I pray most of all that the people here walk away with what you want them to know tonight. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, amen. So our scripture for this evening is John chapter one, verse 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. So we live in a time um, in which we have all kinds of ways to send messages, you know, so many different ways to communicate with one another. So we can send a text, right? Many of us like to send texts. Or we can send an email. Um, I get lots of emails. Um, Not my favorite thing. (laughs) Probably not yours either. Um, Let's see, we can send a Facebook um, message, right, in Messenger. Or I believe you can send messages on Instagram. There's WhatsApp, some people like WhatsApp. Um, There's Snapchat, which I believe my kids send messages in Snapchat. I've never really been able to figure it out, Um, but I know it's incredibly popular. Or if you really wanna go old school, you can actually just pick up the phone and call someone, right? You can um, give them a message through the telephone. But But even today, there are some messages that are best delivered in person. So a marriage proposal, for instance, is best delivered in person, right? I mean, you, I'm sure there are people who text, hey, you wanna get married? But it loses a little bit of something, I'm not sure. Like, oh, just doesn't feel so significant. If you were engaged via text, I apologize. Just <laughs> putting that out there. Um, breakups are the same way. Breakups. Um, are best delivered in person. So I have three young adults in my household, so we've had this conversation a lot. If you're going to break up with someone, please don't do it over text. Sometimes it's inevitable, and that's the way it has to happen, but preferably in person. There's so much more dignity when you break up with someone in person. The news of a bad diagnosis should be done in person. Really, anything significant should be done face to face. I mean, we need physical presence. We understand things more clearly when we are present with people. We need to be able to see facial expressions. We need to see the nonverbals. We need to see if someone is starting to tear up or if they need a hug. We need to be able to touch someone, to be present with them in the highest highs and the lowest lows of life. That is simply how God created us. And when we don't have that, when we haven't had that, such as during the pandemic, we were missing something fundamental. We were left incomplete, often with a deep longing that couldn't quite be put into words. It was a longing that that we couldn't quite articulate or even understand ourselves. So you heard the the scripture that I read right before the message. This is John's version of the Christmas story, John 1, 14. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. And it's unlike the other gospels. It's unlike the other Christmas stories that we read about in Luke and in Matthew with their focus on on the angels and the shepherds and the manger and the crowded inn. John didn't want anything to distract from the main thing. In Jesus, God came. God was sending a personal message to the world. I'm right here with you. The God of all, the one who created everything came to earth in the form of a human being. John didn't want anything to distract from that. So some of you, especially if you haven't heard any of our Advent messages, you might be a bit puzzled. So what does that scripture really have to do with Christmas? Well, that word that John uses, word or logos, 
um, would have been understood quite well by the first listeners of this gospel. So um, to the Jews, they use that phrase word of God or, or shortened just to word to refer to God himself. And to the Greeks, the term word or logos was the ruling principle of all life in the universe. And the author of this scripture is saying to both these groups, to the Jews and the Greeks, the, this one you know of the word, the, this concept of the word logos, the one who became flesh and made his dwelling among us, is Jesus. The word is Jesus Christ. So this was and is an earth-shattering proclamation. It was shocking even. Jesus is God. Jesus is God. So that means that our entire faith hinges on Jesus Christ himself, the one who became flesh and made his dwelling among us. It means the incarnation, God coming to earth in the person of Jesus isn't just a neat comforting idea. The story that we celebrate every Christmas that we're celebrating tonight of a baby being born in Bethlehem to a virgin mother in a stable because there was no room for them in the inn. This story is not just some piece, sweet piece of nostalgia around which we sing beautiful carols and pass out gifts. Rather, it's a life-changing, world-altering truth. In Jesus, God himself decided to come closer, to deliver his message to us in person. So if you look throughout the Old Testament, God revealed himself in a number of different ways. So God would deliver a message, um, certainly through his word, through the law. Sometimes he spoke through dreams or visions, through angels even, through the prophets just to name a few, but all of those things required some kind of interpretation. They needed translation. They needed some level of discernment and people often messed it up. In fact, they messed it up over and over and over again. But the Christmas story is that God decided to bring his message in person, face to face through Jesus Christ. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And that word dwelling, really is more accurately translated, pitched his tent or tabernacled among us. So that would have reminded the Jewish listeners of the book of Exodus, when God was present with his people in the tabernacle. And now God is present with his people in the form of Jesus. God came to earth and he moved into our neighborhood. He brought his message face to face. So on this Christmas Eve, as we celebrate Jesus coming to earth in the form of a little baby, I want us to reflect on why this is a big deal. Why were the angels singing? Why did the shepherds go and worship this baby? Why did the wise men travel such a far distance to bring Jesus gifts? What was the message that God brought in the person of Jesus? And this is the message, you'll see it on the screen. I'm with you, I'm right here with you. God is not distant and far removed. Rather, God became one of us, the word, Jesus Christ, God with flesh on, walked and talked among us, among his people. He hung out with his buddies, the disciples, he healed, he fed, he embraced the outcast, he demonstrated God's power, he demonstrated God's love over and over and over again. And ultimately he went to the cross in the greatest act of love that this world has ever known to atone for the sins of all people, including you and including me. He made a way for us to walk hand in hand with God. Think about that. Jesus made a way for us to walk hand in hand with God with no barrier, 
with no um, fear, with no shame. And then let's not forget in a demonstration of God's great power, Jesus was resurrected three days later, defeating death and ensuring both new life, but also eternal life for those who believe in him. And he continues to share that same message with us tonight. I'm with you. I'm right here with you. This isn't a message just for a small group of people 2,000 years ago. Our God, our Jesus, the Word, the one who became flesh and made his dwelling among us, is not dead. Here we see the connection between Christmas and Easter. We serve a living God. Jesus came to earth to show the world that he was with them then and he's with us now. His spirit is present with us even as I speak to you right now. On this Christmas Eve, let's remember that the one who came to earth in the form of a newborn is present with us in all power and in all glory right here, right now, tonight through the person of the Holy Spirit. Amen? I'm with you, he says. I'm with you. And so sometimes this is so easy for us to forget. It's so easy to forget. We get so distracted. We get so off course. Might I even say, especially during the holidays. We forget this. Maybe depression or anxiety has you in a pit of despair. God's message tonight to you is I'm with you. You may feel alone, but you aren't. God is with you. On your own, you might not have the power to even get through tonight, but lean on God. I love the verse in Philippians chapter four. It says, I can do all things. Who knows this by heart? I can do all things through him who... Very good. Everybody's quoting different translations, but that's fine. (laughs) I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Beautiful. Friends, lean into his power, his strength, his love. Maybe you are currently dealing with a difficult family situation. These things tend to be amplified at Christmas, don't they? Or maybe your marriage is struggling. Everything feels overwhelming and you aren't sure what to do next. Well, God says, I'm with you. I'm with you. Maybe you are facing a tough diagnosis. I know several people who got really difficult health diagnosis just this week. And maybe you don't know what tomorrow holds. Maybe you're not sure how you're going to pay your rent this month. Or you're consumed with worry or fear or grief. And God says, I'm with you. I'm with you right now. Friends, no matter what you are dealing with, no matter where you are in life, if you've been pushing God away or maybe you've been walking closely with the Lord for 50 years, God's message to you on this Christmas Eve is I'm with you. You don't have to go it alone. I'm with you on the mountaintop and I'm with you in the valley. You don't have to live in fear. The God of the universe, the one who created all things, who put the stars in the sky and put the planets into motion, this is the same God who dwelled among us. And it's the same God who wants to walk alongside us right now. God loves you and God wants to walk closely with you. So we are about to share in Holy Communion together. And we believe that when we partake of this meal together, that the presence and the power of Jesus Christ are here, working in ways we don't see, in ways we don't understand. 
And as we come to this table, God has the power to change our hearts and to give us the comfort, the peace, the joy, and maybe even the conviction that we need. Maybe you have drifted away and you've allowed yourself to be consumed by the brokenness of the world. It is so easy to do. But please know this, God loves you and God is with you. Tonight as you come to the table, make a commitment to turn back to Jesus. Maybe you've simply been going through the motions. You're here, but you're really not here. Tonight, make a commitment to turn back to Jesus. God is with you, and God wants you to thrive, not just exist. God wants you to experience the abundance and the joy of walking closely with him. Maybe you've never really said yes to Jesus, not really and you're tired of doing life your way. Because honestly, it is exhausting. Tonight, make a commitment to turn to Jesus. As you come to this table, make a commitment to say yes to Jesus Christ. Trust that God is with you. Know that he wants a personal relationship with you. He has always wanted a personal relationship with you. Wherever you are in your walk with with God, as you come to this table, remember on this beautiful, very cold Christmas Eve that God is with us. God's with me and God is with you. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us and that, my friends, makes all the difference. So my prayer for each of you is that you can truly experience the presence and power of the living God tonight and know that you know that you know that God is with you. Let's pray. Lord, we know that you are with us right now tonight, that your presence is here through the power of your Holy Spirit And that this is only possible because of the incarnation, because of Christmas. You came and you made your dwelling among us. You moved into our neighborhood so that we could get a glimpse, just a glimpse of your amazing love. We are so grateful. God, we as we come to this table, my prayer is that people will experience you in a new way, in a powerful way, in a life transforming way on this Christmas Eve. We give it all to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So this table here doesn't belong to us. Jesus is the host. So you are all welcome to come to this table. You don't have to be a member of this church or any church. You just need to be seeking more of Jesus Christ in your life. You need to come to this table ready to say, Jesus, I want more of you. I want my life to to be different. I want to receive the abundance and the joy and the peace that comes from walking with you.